I don't miss the wrestling, but I'm still wearing the cucumbers. I could tell. It gives me confidence, dude. Why are you oiled up still? Because <laughs> it feels good and it looks good. It makes my muscles pop. You see that? <clears throat> you feel like you like work faster or something? No, I just you look feel quicker. I get a, I've been getting tips. How's that taking a shit on that toilet? You're sliding all around, aren't you? Oh, you'll slide right off. <laughs> you didn't wipe it down, dude? You kind of got to hover over. That's the only way. Oh, God. But my Never. fucking legs Excuse are me. getting strong. Excuse me. Whoa, dude. Excuse me, sir. Talking here. <sighs> Sorry. Um, it is rude. It is rude to come in like that. It's I agree, a little, Dan. I, 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 sincerely, your, uh, I sincerely apologize. What's your account uh, number? I, I, um, it's not about my account. Um, Look, actually, dude. I don't have an account here. I'm not from here. Sorry. Um, All right. Well, if you slip could, us uh, an extra thirty, we'll take the late fees off. Just if, if you could start not, over with. Forms. It's not a late fee issue. Please, if you, just let me. I, I'm sorry. The complaint I, box I'm sorry is in the I, back. I interrupted. Man. I'm sorry. I interrupted. I'm sorry. I came in here super hot, but it's an emergency, and I think when you when you hear me out, you'll understand the stress of the situation. Yeah, you do look a little sunburned. Yeah, it's it's it, it's a scorcher out there. Um, speaking of, so my car broke down. Say, is that a Jeep? About, yeah, that's why it broke down. I don't either, ever buy don't ever buy nice. Jeeps. Okay, you're sweating a lot, or you've been getting into the oil too. I can't tell which one. Well, you it looks like you're covered uh, in oil. Salad? To be honest, I don't know if I'd cast stones there, sir. You look, you're glistening. That's it's how I can more, tell. Got you on that one. That's how I can see it. Okay, this hey, is just pure sweat. Would that sweat. be a uh, candy apple red or just like an apple red? Uh, I would call it fire engine red. Oh, okay. But it, it, but it could be. Okay. Listen, this is speaking of red. My so wife is it had a two red or hair. a four wheel. It's drive. it has four wheels on it. Yeah. So oh, no. the what's the VIN? That. What's the VIN? I, I'm not going to tell it's, you that. I'm not going to tell you that. What? Listen, pulled uh, up on now. Did it come bags. out of the Chrysler uh, factory in St. Louis, or was it up Detroit? I bought it way? used. I'm sorry. Oh, okay? okay, I'm a well, Jeep go, guy. I'm sorry. We okay. could look up I, where it was built if we got that VIN number. That's I, true. That's true. Uh, please, can I just ask my question and 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 move on? And I promise I'll entertain. I'll go get my insurance card. I promise. You okay? should always have that on you, no matter what. In fact, it's that's in, what you it's need in the to car. open an account here. I pro- All right. What's What's this guy's question? Let's let him, you know, he, he interrupted, but it's no reason for I'm us sorry. to treat him um, like this. What's, how much, what, how much is the, revenge is how much is the bottled water? I'd love to have a drink of water. Um, Should we give him the real price or the out-of-towner price? Damn, this guy seems desperate for water. Let's, uh, they, right. They're uh, $8. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Nice. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Out-of-towner price. <laughs> Really throating that bottle, huh? God damn. That was impressive. Let's watch a lot of Lisa Ann movies. Um Do you, I voted for her. Um Yeah, we did too. Okay, cool. Okay. Hey, we're brethren, okay? So you can help me out here, all right? Mm-hmm. Listen. About four miles down the road, my, my car started to have some issues. My Jeep had some issues okay and uh on, i think you got some a passerby on the floor it's sir, super sticky down here that's not me the oil is slip it, it'll <laughs> it'll trip you up that i don't know what the stick is no you've been doing this for two days no i'm the oil the oil makes everything too smooth it is something and it sticked not if it's oil drip and stick no <laughs> drip two and days s- old drip and slick did you melt some butter on Hello? you, too? Babe. No. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, thank oh, God. Shit. I'm olive oil only, dude. I stopped That's by this cl- oh, shit. Oh, oh. first store that I stopped by. Yeah, I thought you'd be here. Where are you? Okay. Is this guy having like a crisis right or something? I don't know. Here? He came in here to drink He's water sweet. and have a yeah. phone call, I guess. He wouldn't even go browse the store. Yeah. Okay, I'll be I'll be right there. Yeah, I love you too. Keep the fucking bottle. 
Hey. Hey. Hey, hey man. What the fuck, dude? All right, that guy hey. was that guy was rude as hell, Dan. I say. Oh hey. shit! I think that was uh, the lady that came in here was asking about him. He kind of looked like the same guy. Hey, they're gone. Just the bros now. All right. Let's uh, let's get a little oil going on both of us. I'll pop in a movie. What do you got? This week on Five Day Rentals, breakdown. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the Five Day Rentals Podcast. This is the video store podcast where each week we take turns picking a flick that we think meets a fun, non-genre specific category. This round's category is Revenge 4. Big Rigs are back. I will be hosting. <laughs> Dan, you got one? <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Mm, a tiny rig. Oh, micro machine. I am Cron Howard. I will be hosting this week. I'm joined as always by a couple guys who were planning to commit regicide until they figured out they both couldn't be the donut king of the Midwest. It's Laundry Dan and Bones. I donut hole king. It's a lot mm. less pressure. You just want to be the hole king? Mm-hmm. Okay. Howdy. Question right off the bat. Are you taking the 90K or are you taking the 90 donuts? 90K. Yeah, 90K easy. Who would take 90,000 donuts? I just think it'd be funny to watch him deliver it to the door. Uh, that's so much food waste. How many can you eat before they go bad? <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I can't even eat a, a like a five package thing of those. Yeah, it would cost you money. To try to figure out what to do with the ninety thousand dollars worth of donuts, you think they'd let you split it? Like, could I get three thousand dollars worth of donuts and just have like a charity day? I think they uh, probably said if you take the ninety k, you got to spend ten k on our little W products. Whatever. That's still eighty k. Yeah, it's it. better than ninety thousand donuts. But that's like thirteen after taxes. So, by the way, lit, little Debbie, I did uh, hit you up on Twitter, and you haven't you haven't responded yet. No. Well, you can't you can't DM your manifesto like that to a company and expect them to respond. You also can't ask little Debbie when her bir- her eighteenth birthday is. Like that's. Uh, <laughs> All right, little Debbie. Fuck, Mary, kill the Keebler elves. Me, uh, me, <laughs> and and <Elves>. Count Dracula. <laughs> hmm. Will you be wearing a Burger King mask? Yes. Okay. Then she would definitely fuck you. <laughs> little Debbie loves the fucking Burger King. He's such a scoundrel. Uh, did you guys happen to notice who produced this movie? Uh, no. Is it Francis Ford Coppola again? No, but this was perfect. Like in our previous Big Rigs category, I pick oh. Ma- I picked Maximum Overdrive. Dino, produced by Dino De Laurentiis. Oh, right on. He produced this movie. <laughs> this guy loves wow. fucking trucks, dude. <laughs> I wonder if we're going to have a tie-in for Bones' pick later tonight. Mm. With with Dino? I don't know, just from our original Big Rigs category. Better start looking, Bones. Um, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. It, it kind of depends on, on what we can milk out of breakdown, I think. You know? It's important to balance, so... Had you seen Breakdown before? I know you, you gave some insight... Last time, Kron, about, uh, you know, coming across this, realizing, mm-hmm. goddamn, this thing cooks. Yeah, I guess I, I watched it on the show, but 
I guess I watched this like a little over a year ago, but I had not seen it before then. I think it was just like, I mean, it seems like it's kind of perpetually on some streaming service. Uh, and I literally, I was just flipping through, I think maybe HBO at the time. I was going to say, I think it was on HBO for like a long time. Yeah. And I just, I was like, oh, a Kurt Russell movie I've not, I maybe have heard of, but yeah, just threw it on one afternoon and I was like, this thing fucking rips, dude. Yeah. I was definitely into this when I rented it in, this was 97. Mm -hmm. So maybe I got the tape in Guam in 98. It, you know, this is the era of it took eight months for a movie to get out of the theater before it was on VHS. So it's not digitally on demand two the, weeks into the movie's the day, run like the it is day now. It hits theaters. Yeah. This was one my parents definitely rented, and I remember coming in and out of the room. And then, yeah, I think I caught it on, like, HBO on, like, a free preview weekend or some shit. Also, there's a line in this movie that reminded me that, oh, I'm pretty sure I watched this with my parents and got uncomfortable. Oh, was like that I, uh, It was the hair? upstairs down. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, okay. Was this PG-13? No, this is an R, bud. I think it's R. Okay. Because I, I was trying to clock... Uh, I don't think they swear that much in it. And then at the very towards the end, at the very end, Kurt Russell has like three fucks in a row. And I was like, I thought with PG 13, you could only get away with one. There, I feel like there was an, an era where a PG 13, you couldn't say the you, F you couldn't even have one F bomb. Hmm. I feel like that's loosened. Um, yeah. I mean, if you had one F and a PG, that was, that was murder one, bro. <laughs> Fucking worst. But hey, dude, they're cussing in the MCU now. Star Lord dropped an F bomb. Oh no! <laughs> Let me run to the theater. These ain't your kids' movies anymore. I'm gonna write my fucking senator about this. <laughs> Not Disney. First, they're letting all the gays in, and now they're saying f bombs. Mm -hmm. No. Why the fuck is my fucking kid hearing this shit? Did you, uh, you guys see that video that came out this week of the two families fighting at Disney World over <laughs> no. who who could take a photo first in front of some? It's just like a, it's just poor Midwestern, out of shape, obese people just throwing haymakers at each other. Hell yeah. <laughs> Does anyone get knocked out? Yeah. I, at one point in the video, there's like the bigger kid. He looks like a giant teenager, but he had like four people just punching on him. And at one point, he's just kind of trying to get up off the ground. Women pulling each other by their hairs and backpacks. and I can't do it because then it'll like push my algorithm to only fights and then I'll get like depressed yeah i'll be like god mm -hmm. oh my god look at these two dudes just wailing on each other in the subway that is i will say that's one thing i like reddit for like the reddit app because like you know stuff pushes its way up to the top but it doesn't screw up like a youtube short algorithm or anything mm -hmm. like my youtube algorithm right now is is nothing but Resident Evil 4 and lefty progressive politics. So, uh, well, I don't want to start on my Instagram because <laughs> Dan showed it to me at Budge Trip and it's fucking filthy. <laughs> what? Dan's it's not, Instagram? It's yeah. not filthy. There's just certain things from certain group of ladies that is on there. I'm done talking about this. Well, after Bud's trip, Karan, you were like, Bones, you gotta get on Instagram. There's so much great wrestling shit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel the same way about TikTok. It's like, could I control my algorithm enough on those two? But I don't know. Uh, I would just waste too much time. Those, those are just so satisfying to just swipe, swipe, swipe. Where Reddit, I feel like I at least have to stop and read you get 
the TikTok with the Instagram, though. What do you mean? It, you watch the TikToks on Instagram video or whatever the fuck they call it. They yeah, all pe- upload them to Instagram as well. Yeah, people will just like take a TikTok and then put it onto Instagram. A TikTok? A TikTok. TikTok. Can you see the ones that I send you? No. Oh, it's, shit. it's weird. Like if I do try to, if I see a link, um, like in Discord, if somebody posts a link to Instagram, it's a 50-50 shot whether or not I can even look at it at all. And even if I can look at it, you can, well, you can look at like two posts and then it says, get that out of here. Yeah. Because I sent you a great one of Do-Rag McMahon. Yeah. Which was I, I, <laughs> clips of Vince being a, I don't John know what. Cena. Yeah. I almost sent you one the other night of Stone Cold was on a podcast talking about how Hunter Hearst Helmsley, Triple H, saved his life. Like, and they were showing the video of the fan coming in to and started punching Stone Cold. And Triple H just gets that dude on the ground and is just fucking slapping him with fists, like, from both sides on the fucking face. The ref comes in there and starts hitting him. Wow. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. I bet that guy didn't even sue, though. <laughs> He's like, this is a dream come true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he probably uh, ejaculated. Do you guys remember Tough Enough, that MTV reality yeah. show that they did? Um, it infiltrated my algorithm enough from Bud's trip that when I came back that week, there was a bunch of wrestling videos. And there's a clip of Triple H going to that camp. And making people like take pops and everything, mm-hmm. and there's a really funny one where he makes the biggest guy like take like take a pop, and Triple H is like, "Just so you know, you got a hole in your shorts. You got one of your nuts sticking out." <laughs> like, at least he told him. Yeah, yeah, he's a stand-up guy. <laughs> you got to tell him. People got nuts sticking out. They got a booger. It's not that. It, don't make it weird. Just sit. You know. Yeah. Roll your dick back up. Mm-hmm. But you dropped a cucumber, Karan. Mm-hmm. Oh, I keep dropping them. Quit wearing Jinkos, man. You're going to fall out the leg of your... I got to get like an aircraft-grade duct tape or something. I mean, <laughs> something... The oil just makes this normal duct tape it's... inert. I mean... Mm-hmm. It's true. Get like a... Maybe super glue... Uh, some Velcro to the cucumber and, you know, have it Velcro to your pubes, whichever side, you know. He doesn't have any. They're all Maybe the, the soft side. That box you gave us for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, I sold. I sold my pubes to buy you a, a locket or whatever it is. Yeah. Did you get 12K from the merchant? Mm-hmm. I was doing Gift of the Magi. Oh, get typical. Mm-hmm. That's just us. That's just mm-hmm. like us, Kron. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you gave me that box for my pubes, but I had sold my pubes to buy you a locket. It's fucking, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Not a love story. Breakdown. Yeah. Speaking of love stories. Speaking of love stories, it is Breakdown from the year 1997, directed by Jonathan Mostow. I think this guy directed like the third Terminator. Yeah, which isn't bad. It's it's obviously not two or one, but still pretty is good. That, and he did U571. Yeah. And I talk to the hand. That one. What's the tagline for it? Rise of the Machines. That's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty cool ending. It's All right. Bad. But U571 is his best movie. Mostow? Yeah. I'd go with Breakdown. All right. Have you ever seen U571? Yeah, the submarine one? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. All right. Looks like IMDb agrees with you, Kron. 7.0 versus 6.6. All right, guys. We open on some aerial shots of a Jeep Cherokee just cruising out in the desert. 
Inside, we see Jeff and Amy Taylor. Jeff is driving. Amy's asleep. Jeff kind of reaches back to grab a thermos when suddenly a piece of shit Ford F-150 pulls out in front of him. Yep. Jeff's clearly a little shaken up. He goes and stops over at a gas station. He's fueling up. But wouldn't you know it, that shitty Ford has pulled up at the pump next to him. The driver approaches. Oh, this guy is uh, MC Ganey. He's Looks kind of like a Lemmy in this movie. <laughs> yeah. But great character actor. This guy's in a ton of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, My it, wife was uh, watching and she's like, is that the guy from Happy Gilmore? Like the big fucking guy. I was like, I don't know. I don't no, know that's, if that's He's um, not. He's not. I looked it up. That's the dude that plays Jaws and Bond. Richard yeah. some. <laughs> Uh, MC Ganey, he was, uh, had a few seasons on Lost, right? Wasn't he one of the, was he like part of the back others or something? Oh, I don't know. All right. MC Ganey walks over. He approaches Jeff, who's Kurt Russell. He says, some vehicle you got here, air, CD player, leather seats. Looks like you sprung for the whole nine yards. Jeff says, yeah, but I guess what you really need out here is a rig like what you got. Why would you want a piece of shit like this when you've got a ride like that? I mean, he's got a point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, I guess it's like Jeff is trying to bury the hatchet in some way. (laughs) This guy's just like, "Uh uh-uh, dude. Don't be a fucking idiot. I'd have been like, all right, let's trade. (laughs) Yeah, could have worked. Maybe if he had just given the Jeep away, they could have avoided all of this. End of movie. This guy they continues. Go out, shoot some jackrabbits or something, you know? Become two best friends. This guy continues talking to Jeff. He tells him, what you really need to get out here is a CB radio. And I would tell you that your handle should be shit for brains. Good one. Can't cuss on a CV like that. Can't have a cooler name than shit for brains. All right, you guys ready? CB CB names. I'm gonna stick with break. I'm gonna say Donut King. Mm, nice. I don't know. It's got to be something kind of. I'll be Throbbing Bob. See, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, right? I was gonna say like Thumper. That sounds like a. Uh, CB handle. Cool. It's also a character in a Bond movie. Thumper? And a, and and a Bambi, Bambi Thumper. movie. Yeah. I don't know. If it, if we're just making up our own, I want to be like King Shit of Fuck Mountain or something, you know? Like, can't be cussing It can't like be that. like that. It's got to be short. That, FCC's on that thing, dude. Throbbing Bob is like... Throbbing that's Bob's not co- an awesome name. That's game. dirtier than King Shit of Fuck Mountain. No, that's no, not, I'm that's not throbbing, dirty. I'm, I've been driving so much. Throbbing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then can I be pulsating Pete? T- too filthy. <laughs> that's, you're disgusting. Come man. on, Bones. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, Eddie Reynolds has class. Use it. Stop uh, Stop looking back at where the line is, Bones. We are going into season two. You have should you should have grown up by now. Yeah, I'm trying to end on a on a bang, ladies. <laughs> Pulsating Pete coming into your town. I feel like if you're pulsating Pete and I'm throbbing Bob, like we would have to be like a team. Yeah, you guys are bringing a bunch of cores back from Denver or something. You could be like caffeinated Carl. I'll think about it while Kron continues cruising through this plot. All right, MC Ganey, he he just tears into Jeff now. He's like, you almost killed us back there. Jeff is kind of apologetic, but then he does add, dude, you pull, like you pulled out in front of us. Uh, they continue to argue. 
but they eventually go their separate ways. MC Ganey goes into the store. And makes the fastest transaction in the history of movies. You just buying a pack of smokes? It doesn't take no, he long. had a fucking 12 pack as well. He's got a tab. <laughs> Probably. It's, a, it's, a small it's sitting at the counter once he parks. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amy returns from the gas station, and she's got some snacks with her. They get back in the Jeep. Jeff's rattled. He's doing about 85 on the roads now. Uh, Amy's kind of like, you might want to slow down a little bit. She starts going through all of her junk food haul. She's got some snowballs, moon pies, some donuts. No crunch, though. No like salt. Like a bag of chips. Yeah. Maybe can't she got. Beat cr- can't beat it. Can't beat a bag of chips. Cron, you're on road trip. What are you? What are you grabbing? I think maybe we've talked about this. Uh, a Fiji water and <laughs> oh, Brewster's millions over here. Uh, the New York Times. <laughs> yeah, I love buying bottles that won't fit into my cup holders. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's just you got to afford them. Uh, road trip. I almost always get like I never drink any soda except when I'm driving on the road. So I'll grab like a if I can find like a local one that's perfect. I'll do that. Um, and then I don't know for a snack, probably like a Kit Kat or a Reese's. That's usually my go-to. What about you guys? I got I just Red Bull and maybe a Twix. But yeah, I usually I like to grab a bag of chips every once in a while. And a water, of course. Yeah, like a like a barbecue chip, maybe kettle cooked. Oh, nice. Reese's Fast Break is the best candy bar ever made. So if I yeah. get that. It's a five star banger. And I'm with you, Kron. I don't often I mean, I'll drink a lot of diet soda, but like full flavored soda, I usually save for a road trip. So like a fountain code red, nothing makes you feel fucking Ooh. trashier than that. You could live in this town. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, Amy starts reading some of the packaging. She's got the donut. She says, hey, you can enter this contest and if you win... You get to pick between $90,000 or 90,000 donuts. Jeff's like, well, shit, I hope we win. Uh, I'd take the donuts and sell them individually to pay off the note on this car. Amy agrees. She says that kind of money could fix a lot of problems. Oof. <laughs> Suddenly, Jeff loses steering in the vehicle. He pulls over. The vehicle's like seized up. Uh, Jeff pulls out a 1997 cell phone, like a big fucking <laughs> brick of a thing. Uh, but he he's out of range. He can't get any signal on it. As these two are standing on the side of the road, who happens to drive by? MC Ganey and his shitty Ford. They kind of yell something, but just keep going. They drive down a ways, but then they stop and turn around. Just kind of sit there, staring up at Jeff and Amy. Vultures. Mm Mm-hmm. So these two are pretty freaked out at this point, but luckily a semi-truck pulls up. This guy gets out. His name's Warren. He's pretty cordial. Um... Helps them push their vehicle off off to the side of the road. And then he offers to give them a ride to the next town over so they can call a tow truck. Jeff's hesitant. He thinks the vehicle might just be overheated and that they can wait it out. And it'll be no problem. Eventually, they all decide Jeff is going to wait with, at the vehicle. Uh, Amy's going to hop in the semi, go to the next town, call for the tow truck. After a while, Jeff's still just hanging around, waiting on this tow truck to show up. There's a little, like, subtle change in light, you know, so you can see that some time has gone by. Yeah, he's got a full beard and... (laughs) 
<laughs> um, like old old man glasses, like those old timey just rest on your nose glasses. It's crazy. It's pretty wild. Yeah, but effective. He's got super long fingernails. <laughs> But super clean ear canals. Cross. <laughs> you just use a key to do that. You take a that's, a that's an old time remove right there. Paper clip and yeah. unfold it and just jam it in. <laughs> you have to this push it. We do it Great. work. <laughs> You're gonna get TikTok uh, ear cleaning videos now in your algorithm. <laughs> You just have to push it like past the point of hurting and then <laughs> you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have the camera one that goes in and you can know it's like a camera? I do. I need it though. I have to it's, get mine cleaned out frequently. <laughs> it's kind of freaky, but it's kind of cool. I don't know if I want to look in there. Yeah, you do. Yeah, maybe. Because it's. I have a navage, and it's extremely satisfying when you get a bunch of shit filling in that uh, that clean out. You see it pop out. You can breathe twenty percent better. Crowder, are you gonna give it to him? What? It costs like eighty bucks, dude. Oh, fucking Brewster's millions over here. <laughs> Fiji and Red Bull. Something. You guys fucking road snacks were Fiji water and Red Bull. Uh, my Red thing, Bull's like two for three bucks, bro. My thing was a joke. I said a soda pop and a Kit Kat. <laughs> <laughs> I get a fucking 12 pack and that's all I need. Mm -hmm. A Yangling, because I don't drink Bud Light anymore. Hook me up with a soda pop. Mm. Pack of Marlboros and a... Route 44 that I hide a tall boy in. But you know who does drink, bud? The fine gentleman at this diner that we're about to show up to. Yep. Uh, Jeff is still waiting around at this point. Uh, he's taking a look all around the vehicle. He notices some wires down below are disconnected. He's like, oh shit, I can fucking do this myself. Puts these things back together. Jeep starts right up. Jeff arrives at Bell's Diner, the next town over. This is where Amy was supposed to be with the semi. He walks inside, asks the cook, hey, where's my wife at? This guy's like, I haven't seen anybody, like, except for the fucking six people I see every day in here. It's just kind of a douche, right? He's definitely making things harder for him. Yeah. Or or is Jeff being a douche? A I don't think both. I don't think Jeff's being that bad actually. I think it's the middle of the fucking desert. People are going to come in hot. And you can't give this guy a minute. I don't know. I think on my second viewing I was like, hey, it's kind of he, he could have came in there a little calmer. Just like the chick from The Last Seduction. Like, you could have came in a little calmer and asked for yeah. a whiskey sour or whatever the fuck she wanted. And this was Jack McGee, who was the very polite bartender at the strip club in The Hidden. That is true. So. Good pool of bones. Mm -hmm. uh, See, now, the question is, has he played another bartender in another movie? Oh, I'm sure. He's probably a, he's probably a bartender in another movie that we've covered on this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's that's the hidden in this one is the only one he's got credit with. Uh, the five Day Reynolds. I know in two thousand one he was in a movie called Air Rage with Ice T. So shh, I'm going to be shh, looking shh, at this shh, while you guys shh, don't be don't be talking about that. <laughs> I think eighty percent of the time, if one of us brings up a movie, someone says. Stop talking about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, this cook asked the rest of the diner, like, hey, has anybody seen this chick this guy's looking for? Nobody speaks up. 
Jeff walks outside a bit confused, but quickly turns around and goes back into the diner. He's like, how far is the next town over? This cook says about 20 miles. Jeff's like, we must have just got our signals crossed. If my wife does happen to show up, tell her to wait here. I'll be back. Jeff's driving. He kind of takes a turn. He sees the semi that they were talking to earlier. Uh, He starts honking. The driver just kind of like waves him like you can go around me. Um, Jeff pulls up along the side of him. He starts honking some more, yelling at him. He's like, dude, where's my wife? Pull over. Uh, The semi driver like just points forward. Jeff can see there's a Winnebago like coming down the (laughs) the, the oncoming lane. So he has to like slam on his brakes, kind of narrowly avoids it. This uh, Cherokee's got some good handling. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys going after your wife or you're just kind of like. Yeah, I I guess I'd go after her, but it's pretty lucky to find the semi truck driver. (laughs) I mean, you make one wrong turn and that's not going to happen, so. I would look, but I would definitely be mad if she wasn't at the place she was supposed to be. <laughs> like, this isn't a time, you know. I don't know. I think when we got to a certain point, I told my wife, I was like, I don't know if I would go this far with with it. <laughs> and she's like, really? I'm like, I mean, I'd go to the authorities and shit, but. Yeah. Well, I, I think you, I think I'd go this far. Yeah, I guess you won't find out until push comes to shove, Dan. Oh, please! You never know who you are until <laughs> until some, your wife gets kidnapped. Yeah, until the moment arises. <laughs> I'd have to like call somebody to watch the kids, and that would take like two hours for them to get over there, and then like. All right, well, you know, there's just, you got to do this and this. And then finally, by the time I got on the road, they're in Michigan already. So it is a, even just that initial scenario is weird because do you think, do you think that you would have split up the way that they did? Would I mean, he's obviously nervous about a brand new car. Just sitting on the side of the road, but he'd take the keys. You mean? Yeah, I think I'd I'm leave not sure the what... car and not hand my wife over to a strange trucker. Yeah, but well, the guy offers multiple times. He even like when they're leaving, he's like, "Are you sure your husband doesn't want to come in here?" And so, well, I think Jeff staying like fucks up his plan. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he mentions it later. Yeah, like they he argue wants about them it. to both come with him. Yeah, I thought about it. I didn't know if I for sure wouldn't split up. You know, there's no cell signal. I don't know. And just yeah, putting would, put, giving uh, my wife over to a trucker is yeah, I wouldn't do sketchy. That you know. Yeah. The only other thing I could think of was I go with him and you stay with the car. But again, you're leaving her there unprotected. Yeah. So. And the tr- you've already seen the other truck. So. Yeah. I mean, either way, we're headed. We're headed. We're doing this. <laughs> All right, Jeff's finally able to like cut off this semi truck driver. We're doing. We're doing this like we're gonna do this scenario. Like we're all gonna be put through this exercise. I will say, if Five Day Reynolds is going on a budge tour, and this happens to you two, like yeah, I'm going to the Airbnb and just chilling. I'm not. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot, I'll call, Dan. I'll call yeah, you guys. I, I know you're. Uh, I know you're joking. I luckily uh, know how big of a heart you have, and you would rally the uh, troops and come get me. Uh, I'd hit, uh, find my iPhone or find my friends, see where you guys are. 
I know I would have enough faith to know that you would eventually show back up to the Airbnb because you would have kicked the shit out of these dudes. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm unkillable, so it's fine. I would just uh, go to the bathroom and then slip off the sawed-off shotgun I have tied around my leg. <laughs> Take care of the situation. Is this? Oh, is, is is that what it really is? And the cucumber thing is just a joke? Mm-hmm. Like it's actually a sawed-off? You'll never know. You're trying to throw people off? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Dan. I'd be showing up to the Airbnb with a fucking brand new semi. I mean, but what if we did run this scenario on our wives without telling them? Just to see what they would do. Two thirds of us would get divorced. (laughs) And then the last one would have developed a new kink. So that's... I, I mean, my wife watched this. So she's like, nope, I'm not going that fucking trucker. No, I tried to get Sam to watch it with me, and when I sold her, like, I gave her a rough synopsis, she was like, nope, no thank you. So, oh, my, my wife watched this with me, like, a week after I first saw it, and I was like, you gotta watch this movie. <laughs> this is a good movie. She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. She was like, well, it's better than all those puppet movies you've been watching. <laughs> Uh, so Jeff cuts this guy off, gets him to pull off to the side of the road. He gets out. Jeff's like, dude, where's my wife? The driver's like, how the hell should I know? You're welcome. (laughs) Jeff's like, come on. It's me. It's the guy with the Jeep from earlier. Driver's like, buddy, I have never seen you before in my life. I think they do like a very subtle, like, he might be wearing glasses now, and he wasn't before, and he's he's like changed his ball cap. Yeah, I was going to say, he's wearing a different hat. Mm-hmm. The same hat, but a different design. Yeah, like one is the American flag, and one just says USA on it or some shit. Yeah. The, the important thing, though, is that it's J.T. Walsh, and the guy is incredible. Mm-hmm. The supporting cast in this movie, I think, bumps this thing up a notch, and he is so good in this scene. I think it, I think Billy kind of sucks though. I don't know. I thought I thought Billy is kind of cool for like a <laughs> shitty. He's like doing a really good job playing that the shitty younger guy in a crew who thinks he's a hot shot. Mm-hmm. So, and I totally forgot about his little his little ruse. The reveal. Yeah. <laughs> his his gump thing that he does yeah. for a while. Yeah. All right, Jeff sees a cop driving by, luckily. Uh, he flags the cop down, starts explaining the situation. Uh, last time I saw my wife, she was with this guy in, in the truck. Driver says, look, I'm just driving. This guy runs me off the road, starts screaming at me about his wife. I've got no idea what's going on. Cop asks if he can check out the rig. Um, Warren's like, yeah, go ahead. Cop hops up, looks in the cabin, nothing there. Has him open the the Wait, back. There's something there. There's a fucking splooge on the floor. Uh, there's a jizz stain on the floor. Yeah, there's a. I'm I'm pretty sure it's a. I backed it up. It it, <laughs> it looks like it, it's not toothpaste. Um, that and the tiny little TV stood out to me. I saw the tiny TV, but yeah, your, our iPhones are bigger than this little TV. It was, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you got an eye for cum. I didn't see that one. <laughs> I, I, it seems pretty specific. Like his, the route of his flashlight. I think they're trying to make it seem like, I don't know. I'm guessing it's pretty believable that a trucker would have a cab just, you know. <laughs> Like Painted. a fucking Pollock painting back there, you know? So. Uh, Dan gets, gets lonely it, on the road, man. Hey, man, that, hey, that's that's two uh, uh, painter's references in a row. This is, talk about class, Dan. It's turning into a classy podcast. Yeah. Dan, settle this argument. Did you see come on the floor of this guy's I, truck? I did not see that. I watched. I watched this twice, and that did not cross my mind. 
I was like, oh, he's got a little TV. He's definitely watching some X-rated films at night. But Was there a porno mag on the... It looks like some sort of magazine. I thought on the he bed. had like a nudie mag in there. Yeah, maybe. Uh, listeners, hit us up on Discord and let us know. Was that cum on the floor of this truck? Why? Why waste it? Why? Because it, it, we are going to get hit up, and I'm going to be ganged up on. I just want. I wanted someone else's input. Me and Dan didn't see it, but. I mean, please refer all your questions to Bones, the five-day rentals com expert. Bones, put up a screenshot on the Discord and <laughs> circle the the okay. gist stayed. The evidence. Will do. <laughs> I mean, if if you're seeing the argument of is a hot dog a sandwich, I mean, maybe this could be the new hot thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is, is that, that a gist stain or not? I, I'll fight everybody. It's fine. I've gone my whole life. All right. Cop checks out the rig. Grow uh, up an grow up an atheist in a Christian town, man. You develop a thick skin. All right. He also has uh, Warren open up the trailer, and there's like not shit in there. There's like two boxes with nothing, like just old clothes or something in them. The way he says personal my stuff. personal stuff, my personal belongings. It's like oh, goddamn. <laughs> There look like a 10-foot steel pole in the back. Yeah. Look like junk. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like I didn't trashed. see any I didn't see any jizz in the trailer though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listeners, God. hit us up on Discord and let us know is there jizz in the trailer? Uh they can't find Amy anywhere. And eventually the cop is like, "All right, you're free to go." This again, kind of- sorry, again on like casting of the supporting characters, having Rex Lynn, as we know, uh, Travers from Cliffhanger, uh, be the cop yep. immediately. You're just programmed to go. Oh, I don't trust this fucking cop. It's it's the the casting in this movie is like fucking spot on. Travers, <laughs> you piece of shit. Uh, Jeff is pissed at this point. Cops like, dude, look, there's no evidence. There's no evidence of foul play, uh, unless you can count that cum stain on the ground. It's just personal Listeners, space. Go check out our episode on Cliffhanger. We covered that one. Another uh, the cron pick. Yeah. Eventually, this cop is like, maybe you just got the trucks confused. Like, this is a really plain truck. Um. Jeff's like, no, this is the guy. This is the truck. I know what I'm talking about. Cop says, hey, did you and your wife have an argument or something? Jeff's really mad at this point. Uh, Cop's being pretty calm. He's like, dude, it's all right. I've seen this before. I've seen guys just like leave their women on the side of the road. Couples argue. Yeah. Can you believe her? She said she'd take the 90,000 donuts. <laughs> You, were you two reading donut <laughs> coupon advertisements? The third one this week. These fucking donuts are causing yeah. me a lot of trouble this week. Eventually, the truck driver leaves. Uh, Jeff goes down to the police station so he can file a missing persons report. With you know, somehow the most polite yet most annoying deputy ever. Mm-hmm. The sheriff calls him a good man, and I'm like... I don't know about that. Statistically speaking, your wife is raped and murdered, but I'm not saying it happened to your wife, but she's probably, you know, mangled to death. But again, we'll do what we can. Why don't she go wait? Maybe she'll show up. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jeff does notice that there is just a giant wall full of like missing person posters. So these two cops are (laughs) pretty shit at their jobs. Yeah. (laughs) Cop tells him he'll he'll get the paperwork together, but they can't really do much until 24 hours have gone by. Jeff ends up going back to Bell's Diner. He again asks the guy who cooks food there, like, have you seen my wife? Some old dirtbag at the bar tells Jeff to go check the ladies' room. Hey, here's something to remember, guys. 
if your wife ever goes missing and it's only been an hour, tell the cops that she went missing yesterday. Because that happens all the time, right? They're like, oh, she's got to be missing for 24 hours. But if you just go ahead and say like, oh, she's already been missing for a day. And I know Mm -hmm. from the movies, you're going to tell me 24 hours. So it's been 24 hours. Yeah. Now that might fuck up, you know, uh, her whereabouts and shit, but at least get them rolling, you know, get them started, get the, get the guys going. And then 20 minutes later say, oh, actually she was blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's smart thinking. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff goes over to the ladies' room to check things out. He opens the door and sees some poor, sad old woman vomiting. She looks up and says, I'll be right with you, cowboy. I mean, you gotta give her credit. I mean, shit. Lady works, dude. I mean. (laughs) Consistency. I I would beat the shit out of those guys at the bar. Yeah. By this point, I'm so- sucks fucking hype like i'm just so fucking charged to come out and then them kind of like laughing to themselves yeah somebody's getting a fucking beer bottle well it's kind of shitty to like pick on a guy who's obviously in a bad in a bad way you yeah know? is everybody here involved no i don't think so because the i mean the cops will get there but i don't think the cops are mm-hmm I just think there's just dick to do in this fucking county, so it's there's probably some animosity to anybody that just drives through, even though I'm guessing that's probably what your fucking economy is based on. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they got uh, Massachusetts license plates, so. Hmm. I must vote blue. Have you guys ever, like, driven through a town like this and had to fill up? Yeah. I remember there was one time when my band was playing shows and Travis, the singer, had like really long hair. And I remember some like old shit kickers like fucking chatting us up at the gas pump because he had long hair and it (laughs) offended them. (laughs) But it definitely had like this kind of vibe to it, you know? When we were in New Mexico, we stopped at a place and I could not figure out how to get the pump going. It was so old. Like you had, it had like a little crank on it. Weird. I had to go inside. I was like, I'm sorry. I don't, and they're like, it's fine. We're usually full service or something. And I was like, oh, okay. And they came out and and did something, but like no card reader. It had like one, one octane level, (laughs) but. It looked more like uh, so what the kind fucking of old country for old or no country for old men stop that he's at. Like there were like you know random fan belts hanging up and a little kiosk of like beef jerky and you know those like uh, beard brushes <laughs> nice. that have been there from like the seventies, you know, for seventy five cents a piece. You start like looking up and you're like, oh shit, I didn't even know they were still selling leaded gasoline. Yeah. <laughs> but this place has it. <laughs> yeah, we bought a few thousand gallons before Jimmy Carter got into <laughs> office. We slowly working our way through it. Uh, Jeff's mad. He's about to leave, but he approaches the cook one more time. He's like, give me those order receipts. This is a smart, smart move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a smart move. So as well. This guy's like, what? He's like, you write down the names of all the people on the tickets. I want to see them. Jeff grabs all the receipts, but the cook pulls a gun on him. Jeff kind of backs out of the diner. Outside, a real gump type catches Jeff. He's like, maybe I've seen Amy. This guy's like, uh... Do the voice. (laughs) No. (laughs) Uh, He implies that maybe he has seen Amy. Maybe she was inside a little while ago. Maybe she came in a semi. Uh, She left with a couple guys, is what he ultimately ends up saying. They went down Route 7 North. Are you the one looking for that? (laughs) Dan's got it. 
tread lightly. sounded like a hillbilly. Tread, That's tread lightly, dude. <laughs> uh, they went down Route 7 North over by the river. Oi, you looking for that lady? <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> uh, Jeff's like, all right, dude, come with me. We'll talk to the police. This guy says, well, now you're the dummy. Police are in on it. Jeff hops in his Jeep. He races up Route 7. He's able to get through uh, to somebody on his cell phone pretty briefly. He's like, hey, you know your buddy in the FBI? I need to talk to that guy. <laughs> But the signal cuts out. He's not able to get him back on the phone. Well, he yells like, no, don't call me back. I'm like, well, why wouldn't... Oh, shit. Why wouldn't you want this guy to call you back? I'm roaming. He... It's yeah. 1997. <laughs> I don't get free incoming calls. <laughs> call me after 9 p.m. <laughs> Jeff eventually reaches a road close sign on Route it... 7. Is it Tim and Eric that where that has the Cinco phone where it only makes it only makes calls it can't receive calls? Yep. <laughs> uh, Jeff reaches a road close sign. He starts to turn around. When do you know it? The way is blocked by that F one fifty. This guy's everywhere. MC Ganey pulls a gun, tells Jeff he better get out. But Jeff whips the jeep around, drives right through the barricade. Guys, the chase can get. The chase is on. These guys are whipping through some dirt roads. Uh, Jeff, kind of out of options, eventually just drives his jeep right into the river. <laughs> he starts floating downstream. MC Ganey's kind of up on a bluff, uh, taking shots at him. He's able to slip out of the jeep and continues swimming down river. This stunt looks great, man. That's a fast-moving river, too. Yeah. It does look really good. Uh, Jeff makes it over to land. He looks over and sees MC Ganey, or MC Ganey and a bunch of his crew are, like, pulling the Jeep out of the water. When you know the guy from the diner sneaks up and clocks Jeff right in the head with a rifle butt. Jeff wakes up in the trunk surrounded by these hillbillies. Uh, there's Warren, MC Ganey, Billy Bob is over there. Fuck. These guys tell Jeff, <laughs> hey, we got your old lady. She told us how much cash you've got. Now we want that same number from you. Jeff's scrambling. He's like, we keep our money in a lot of different accounts. The numbers fluctuate. MC Ganey eventually is like, dude, we've been lied to. This guy ain't no donut king. I'm going to do him right here. Pulls out a pistol, puts it to Jeff's head. Jeff shrieks out, $90,000. Is that what you needed to hear? They drag and Jeff out of the trunk. And folks, we got gas station donuts driving plot. It's, it's fucking good, dude. This is it's, good writing, and it's a smart move on the wife's part. Well, you don't think anything of it at the beginning yeah. of the movie. And then when you get here, it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> that the fucking donuts. That tiny thing had meaning. <laughs> Is that what you said to your wife? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, I know. <laughs> She's like, got it. Dealt with your tiny thing and, for and many years the cucumbers. <laughs> Uh, they, drag, they drag Jeff out of the trunk. Who's waiting outside? It's Warren, the trucker from before. He tells Jeff, we've got Amy, and if you ever want to see her again, here's how it's going to work. That's a good cliffhanger. We should take a pee break right now. <laughs> good call. All right, welcome back, everybody. If you're just now joining us, uh, welcome to Cumgate. What was on the floor of that truck? <laughs> Show us the emails. All right, we're... <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it. 
me this and, really needs to be me like and my, a live YouTube me and my show pro cumpers we're um we're gonna march the Capitol. Oh shit! It's gonna be an even bigger cleanup than January sixth was. <laughs> All right, guys, we are in the middle of Breakdown. Uh, uh, great, great movie. Kurt Russell, his wife gets kidnapped. That. We haven't rated it yet. Hey, shut up. Damn. Kurt Is this Russell's the first time there. we've said that it's Kurt Russell? I think okay. I said it once before. I mean, it's a crime pick. The audience automatically knows it's either John Carpenter or Kurt Russell that's coming mm-hmm. from him, or a mm-hmm. puppet. Either... What if John Carpenter made a puppet movie where Kurt Russell was god the lead damn, as a puppet? The world couldn't handle. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> I really, I do either. It's either Kurt Russell, Carpenter, De Palma, or a puppet yeah. movie. <laughs> it's basically I mean, the thing's got puppets. That's true. Yeah, but Kurt, it'd be cool if Kurt got to voice one of the puppets. I mean, I don't know if this is as good as your last pick, but we'll see. Bold, yeah, we'll, bold we'll see. <laughs> uh, Three and a half from Penny Smasher. <laughs> yeah, Chad, Chad will love Tough Guys Don't Dance. Chad gets it. And he's watched like 5,000 movies. <laughs> Cool, yeah, it's a fun time, it's a fun movie. Let's keep it, let's rate it high. (laughs) Maybe you haven't even seen the bottom of the barrel bones. (laughs) There's so much further down to go. Bones is a tough guys don't dance was a full shit that he just can't flush. Yeah, you just you just leave the house, let somebody else find it. Maybe I'll maybe I'll move it up in the rewind. Yeah, you do. You do that. Maybe I will too. <laughs> Dan, we could both give it one point and get no, it into the. You can't. <laughs> no, you top can't. Of the list. <laughs> we said two moves. Yeah, I got a whole. I can dedicate a full point to it. Yeah. No, so it can, can only cry. go up ma- max one point. <laughs> we said two moves. Because if somebody gave it a one, you could still no, knock it down. No, five. we discussed that very early on. That you, that yeah, Karan. Audience got a little preview of the rewind coming mm-hmm. up. Yeah, mm-hmm. tough guys is moving up. <laughs> All right, these guys have pulled Kurt Russell out of this trunk. Warren is waiting there. Warren says, "If you ever want to see your wife, this is how it's going to work." They're kind of up on this bluff overlooking the town of Bracken. <clears throat> Warren says, in a few minutes, you're going into that bank down there. You're going to tell the teller that you want a wire from your account in Boston for $90,000. He continues, there are two cops in Bracken. One is on desk duty over in the foothills. Or one is on desk duty. The other one is on patrol in the foothills. Uh, we've called in an accident, which means the patrol cop is going to have to drive out, find out there's no accident, and then drive back into town. That gives you 50 minutes, which is how much time you've got me, you've got to get me my money. Uh, they hand Jeff like a jacket. They're like, you're going to need to look presentable if you're going into the bank, but it's just kind of like a shitty old torn up car heart. Minus the giant blood stain on your fucking forehead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeff just said, he, like, yeah, you need to fit in more with the lower class of people here. Locals. Yeah. You, your polo and everything just screams out of towner. Mm-hmm. 97. Your polo looks like you voted for Clinton. 97? Uh, well... Yeah. 96. Yeah. You would have voted for him. Yeah. I think the joke still works. <laughs> I I doubt these people voted Clinton. Was there a <laughs> on the dress in 97? 
Is that had that happened yet? I thought that was like. I think that was yeah. second term, which would have been yeah. ninety six through two thousand. Yeah, was it? I don't know yeah, when the. You guys don't know your presidential history. I know all the cum dates. What was the Lincoln one? It was in that theater. Ford yeah. Theater. That's why he had that private box. Mm-hmm. So he could just paint the walls up there. How have we not got canceled yet? This might be the one. Please. Uh, you think that's Jeff why he wore I that top you. hat? So, like, if he got a boner in class, he could just, like, set it on his lap? Like, it was a good way to... Lincoln must have had a huge oh, dong yeah, dude. then. Lincoln had the biggest dong. You think Lincoln had the biggest dong? So well, like LBJ dance. famously had the, you know... We've talked about that phone call before, right? Where he calls and orders the pants. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And he's like, you got to build them special for my huge yeah. dick. They cut me. They cut me. <laughs> Need some more room in the bung hole. <laughs> oh, that's so... <laughs> I haven't thought about that since we last talked about it. It... Uh, what do they say? It lives rent free in my head. I mean, you know you're getting recorded. Because it's just yeah, funny, dude. The guy famously made people watch him while he took shits. Like he would continue conversations while he took a shit. He just hey, did not care. Put yeah. Man of business. Fucking power yeah. move, dude. <laughs> yeah. Just to have the willpower to shit while someone's watching you. Wasn't Ford next after him? And the only reason he picked Ford was because he'd pardon him? (laughs) (laughs) Or was that Nixon? That was Nixon. Yeah. Was it Nixon? Yeah. So Nixon, LBJ, no, LBJ came after JFK. JFK. Then Nixon and then Ford. Are we getting well, this didn't right? Ford beat Carter? Or did Reagan beat Carter? That's the... Okay. Reagan might have beat Carter. 85. I just know when they all came. I don't know when they got elected. <laughs> uh, Jeff tells Warren, like, there's no need to do all this shit. I can get the money. Warren just replies, you got 49 minutes left. Better get going. Inside the bank, Jeff says that he wants to drain his account in Boston. And this is, he's like, I know there's $5,000 in there. Um, he also says he has a credit card with a 6K limit. Can they advance some money on that? But the guy's kind of like, no, if you don't have an account here, it's like 500 bucks. Jeff starts to tell this teller what's going on. Uh, he's like, I'm in a bad spot. The whole town's under surveillance. Suddenly, a guy in a leather jacket walks over. Uh, he kind of leans over to the teller, and he's like, Hey, you're the guy to see about a car loan. But Jeff's all freaked out. He's like, uh, jump, like Never mind about all that other stuff. Just let me drain my 5K account. This guy goes to get him the money. Uh, Jeff goes to the bathroom. He's looking for anything he can use. He finds a wooden handle off of a plunger, <laughs> takes that and kind of like sticks it up his sleeve. I thought he was going to break it in half, you know, kind of sharpen, sharpen it at first, but. I guess like there's surely something else in there that you could have. You had a whole closet full of chemicals. I don't know. Good stick. I, That's yeah, yeah. something. Maybe a fucking dirty toilet I, brush. 
just wave that around in people's if I, faces. Yeah. If I hit you in the head as hard as I could with a plunger handle, it hurt. It also yeah, hurt but, to spray some 409 in your face, but. I think the 409 in the face would be worse than getting hit what, with a plunger. What uh, spray configuration are you choosing on that nozzle? Are you going for straight stream? So you get the distance, but oh, yeah. you know you got to be a little sharper with your aim. Are you going for that uh, more, you know, cloudy spread? I think you're getting more with the stream. There's more liquid coming out, right? Yeah, but you got the chance of like hitting them in the bridge of the nose. And yeah. Then... <laughs> well, it's gonna splash. I mean, you aim for face. If if it's getting if it's going in your mouth, yeah. I, Got nose, mouth. I mean, it's the it's the good buckshot versus birdshot argument, right? Like birdshot will fuck you up, but buckshot will blow right through you. It's more like slug versus shot. Slug. I I feel like you would have to be. You're pumping a lot more with the with the mist. Yeah, but that stream, you get a little bit more tension on it. You get you got to. You got to let it come out further before you get that full compression and get that next stream. This, uh, hey, it sounds like we're having a Chicago sweeper versus hand cannon <laughs> discussion here. This is probably why Jeff went with wooden plunger <laughs> handle. <laughs> this was all racing through his head at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> He's like, just a stick. I know what that'll do. I don't have to prime the pump to get a good stream going. It could have been out, too. I mean, those things yeah. always go Yeah, and then out. you're trying to hold it at an angle to get the straw to kind of pick up what's left in the you know bottom corner. Mm-hmm. Jeff heads back out to the teller's desk. He sees a letter opener, takes that as well. Uh, And he cleverly notices some money bands, slips those into his pocket. So is this a robbery since he's stealing this stuff? Just not money? It is. It is technically theft. Yeah. Yeah, but like this is like theft tin. It doesn't even (laughs) register hardly on the (laughs) theft barometer. It's ain't theft yeah. one, that's for sure. <laughs> theft one is like Fort Knox, right? Hmm. Did they change that name? Theft one? No. Last week, the government changed the names of the basis if they were Confederate related. So now Fort Bragg is now called Fort Liberty. Cool. Wow. And then they changed Lee and maybe like six other ones. I think I can't. I don't know. I don't even know why this is an issue. Like <laughs> they were the enemy. Yeah, the cat's coming in behind me. That's why the door is slowly creeping open. <laughs> Fucking yeah, scary, man. dude. <laughs> He's got a bottle of 409. <laughs> it does seem weird that we named any, like, military base after Losers. people who attacked yeah. us, <laughs> like, essentially. I mean, I seen a guy the other day with, it said, U.S. Army retired. And then his license plate was a Confederate flag. I was like, what? Still fighting for the South, You should be allowed to run him off the road. (laughs) Today I seen a lady in a car and it had a picture. She had a little vinyl sticker that said, just to a regular mom trying not to raise liberals. I was just like, that's child abuse, right? Yeah. 
You should just not say any political stuff to your kids ever. <laughs> exactly. That'd be the way to go. It's like, why? You should be teaching them cool stuff like uh, how to pour powdered creamer onto an open flame. <laughs> You taught me that. Yeah, it's fucking still cool, dude. <laughs> and I tell people that, and they're like, huh? Oh, you can get like, a big-ass yeah. fireball going with that, dude. <laughs> hey, if you're 11 and you're listening to this, shut the fuck up. Shut, shut the fuck up. Stop. 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 <laughs> stop. Like 17. Stop. stop. <laughs> Why? I probably did no, it. I already had to... We can tell you I had to, to burn cut a something house out when too. fucking George was here. I'm not cutting that either. Shut up. Move on. It's pretty. It's pretty yeah. quick. It's not like a sustained just, fire. You can't say if you're 11 dude. years old. Uh, if you're 12, geez. okay. <laughs> All right. So bleep out the age, but leave the rest of it. Uh, Jeff walks out with his 5K. Scott's of- house was fine after it happened, and I was like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. I never burned the house down doing it. It went from the deck all the way to the ground. That's how good I was at pouring that creamer, <laughs> dude. <laughs> coffee mate? Yeah, I think it was coffee mate. Yeah. Jeff walks out with his 5K. Payphone's ringing outside. Jeff. We're 38. We grew up with the Anarchist Cookbook, which is something you cannot find online, young kids out there. You Don't can, Google that. You can find it. <laughs> Google it on your mom's work computer. <laughs> uh, Jeff says he's got the 90,000. He starts. Uh, he's told, just start walking down the road. We're going to send a truck to pick you up. Jeff's walk. It seems like he walks a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he walks all the way like out of town to railroad tracks. <laughs> He's probably like, these guys aren't fucking going to pick me up. Fucking I think, assholes. I think there's like a, a big box truck that passes him, and he like stops and just looks at it like, it's about time, <laughs> and they just keep going. Eventually, MC Ganey rolls up, tells Jeff, just throw that money on the seat. After a little back and forth, uh, Jeff hands over the cash. MC Ganey tells him to turn around, ducks tape Jeff's hands, pulls him up into the truck. Jeff says, I gave you the money, just let her go. Ganey gets a phone call. Uh, Jeff's kind of able to fish that letter opener out of his sock and he starts working on the tape. Ganey grabs a bundle of bills. He starts to fan through them. But he's like, what the hell is this? Because it's just a hundred on the outside of a stack of ones. He's like, this is a bunch of singles. He looks over at Jeff, but Jeff's got his hands free now. Lunges forward with the letter opener. Stabs it right into MC Ganey's yeah. neck, which looks badass. They kind of start swerving all over the road. They're fighting in the truck. Ganey pulls a gun, but Jeff is able to grab it. Pistol whips Ganey and then ducks, duct tapes him to the seat. Jeff's driving now. He's beating the shit out of MC <laughs> Ganey. He kind of wrapped the duct tape around his neck. So he's like slamming on the brakes to kind of like oh, choke great. him. Eventually the cop from earlier passes these two. Uh, Jeff is able to get a few details out of Ganey. Um, MC Ganey, he doesn't know the exact location. They've got Amy. They're just driving her around in a truck, but everyone's going to meet up at this truck stop where the money is supposed to be delivered. Jeff eventually stops for the cop car. When he hops out, he's still got the gun in his hands and he's like, I know where my (laughs) wife's at. Eventually the cop like tells him, all right, you got to stop, drop the gun, get down on the ground. Jeff does so, but inside, uh, Ganey's broken free. He hops out, shoots the cop. Jeff kind of takes off running. He's about to shoot Jeff, but the cop pulls out his gun and shoots Ganey right in the back. 
Nick of time. Jeff races over to the truck stop. He's walking around, sees some cops patrolling the area. Eventually, Jeff finds Warren at a payphone. Follows him and crawls under his truck. As the truck is speeding down the road, uh, Jeff's kind of like trying to shimmy under on the underside of the, the semi. Yep. There's a pretty cool shot where like his feet drop down and they're, you know, being drug on the pavement. I would have just stayed there. You kind of got to like hold yourself up though. Unless you can find some kind of like struts to lay across. I mean, ideally you would have just started between the truck and the trailer. But this is cooler. Mm -hmm. It's more tension. That's all this movie is, man. 20 minutes in and it's just tense, dude. It's a, yeah. it's a ride. You you get on and you go. It's terrible. It's 1.0. Wow. I wanted it's to fitting see more for you. Story. There's not a guy sitting on stairs just drinking bourbon. I do love yeah, that that was that. Dan's rationale for... I meant, like, throughout the movie, his... The way he was acting. Hey, you like what yeah, you man. like. I mean, I'm getting shit for a 3.0. There are so many fours that we could have discussed, but we didn't have enough time. You're arguing. Okay. You're, you're arguing. You're arguing the good fours four? versus. I should have gave it a four. Yeah. That's what the rewind's for, Dan. I don't think I'm going to do a rewind. So I'm going to dedicate one full point. Me too. I think I'm going to do the same. To tough guys don't dance. As Jeff is climbing, we see the gun that he stole uh, off of Ganey. It comes loose from his pants and like just gets you know taken by the road, essentially. <laughs> Jeff's... <laughs> So many guns along the road these days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I bet you've driven by in your lifetime three to five guns on the 100%. side of the highway. One hundred percent. Yeah, they're, they're just dudes holding guns standing by the driveway or the highway and their driveways too. Yeah, I bet you've driven by three to five that have come loose and are just laying mm -hmm. on the road. How many dead bodies do you think you've been like extremely close to? Well, yeah. Bones, you read yeah. Yeah. EMS, so. Bones In, more than intimately like, close. Didn't know it. Maybe that was the wrong word. Um, hey, but guess what? I'm higher than Bones in this category. <laughs> I've been around so many dead bodies. I thought you were, like, high right now. No way, dude. I don't know. You go on a hike, you always think about it, like. If I come across a dead body, you kind of hope you do. No. Shit. Mm -mm. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to enjoy nature, dude. <laughs> see a waterfall. You, see, see you a... just step over it, dude. Go on about your day. <laughs> They're already dead. Walking. They're already dead. Don't, don't ruin your trip. Sucks yeah. to be him. Give them a kick to make sure they're really. Yeah. Poke them with Ow. your plunger stick that you have up here. Coat sleeve at all times. Come on, step over, babe. We still got 2.5 miles to go. You want your steps or not? Listen, we're going to hit a little bit of an incline after we step over the dead body, so hope you're okay with that. Tighten up those laces. Jeff's able to crawl his way onto the back of the cab, uh, so he's kind of, like like Bones was saying, between the trailer and the sleeper cabin. Eventually, Warren gets over to his house. Now, I did see a cum stain 
in between there. Yeah, but that's that's riff raff, dude. That's not Warren. Okay. Well, it could be. I mean, Jeff had a long time. You know, probably just got bored. <laughs> yeah, he's probably trying to get his mind right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Release mm-hmm. some tension. Well, it could be like I've never cranked it in the open air like this. <laughs> like it's cruising sixty five out here. Yeah, he may not make it. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to die thinking, you know, what if? <laughs> cranked it in the open air. Yeah. <laughs> You got that wind whipping around you. It's probably pretty scenic out yep. there. <laughs> against the, the name wind. Of my first album. I'm just coming against the wind. <laughs> uh, All in our sister. <laughs> Splooge in the wind. <laughs> Crown's wheels are turning. You can tell. He was going. He's going. He's like, nope. Moving on. Come on. Can, can, candle in the wind. Yeah. That's what I was trying to do was just to, just some semen in the wind. <laughs> How's that yeah, work? Does that work? Some splooge. Your <laughs> songs is wind. All right, so eventually they get over to Warren's house. He's got a, you know, kind of a picturesque little farmhouse and a big old. What's that Whitney Houston song? Wind beneath my wings. So the wind beneath my cum shot. Cum beneath my. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's the route I was gonna go. Uh, Warren's kid runs out. I think his name's I'm, Deke. He opens I'm not up cutting the that space. Do- I want. I want the listener. I, that's that's <laughs> to make their own. Uh, insert their own. Uh, cum pun right there. That's when. That's when you join the Discord yeah. and tell us what it was you thought of. <laughs> yeah, give us your punch up for a wind song. Deke opens up the door. Jeff is able to get into the barn. He finds boxes and boxes of, like, cameras and clothes and license plates and suitcases and shit. My note was, God damn it! why didn't I name my kid Deke? You could probably legally change it, right? That's true. It'd cost money, though. Uh, Jeff also finds a baseball bat up there. How does his wife not fucking notice just all this random shit up there? Yeah. His, oh, Warren's wife? Yeah. I get the impression she doesn't ever go into the barn. She's like, oh, I'm just going to make breakfast. I heard some women screaming yeah. out there, but you want bacon or sausage? And how much do you need to, like, I mean, obviously you're keeping this because it has some value. Like, how much are you... Stashing well, I, it before you caught, sell, uh, sell it. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say half a garage sale, dude. Make like another six hundred. Well, you'd get like one shit. person driving by, and odds are you already kidnapped that person's wife, so they don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we only took three grand from that fucker. He didn't get by shit. I also guess. I mean, if you sell twenty cameras at a time, it's got to be a little suspicious. <laughs> I mean, the cops had all those missing fucking <laughs> papers hanging up of missing people. They wouldn't catch on. They'd be buying some of it. Wow, this looks like a shirt that I've seen in a photo of a... Somewhere. This is really cool, though. I think I'll buy it. <laughs> I think my wife might like this blouse. Warren's goons show up in another truck. Uh, They pull into the barn. Eventually, they open up a little side compartment and drag out Amy. They open up a door in the floor and put put her in there. I do like the little... They 
she scares them because <laughs> they think she's yeah, dead. Yeah, they think the fumes mm-hmm. got to it's her. It's just like, yeah. ah, we'll bury her later. What I dig, I dig that this, uh, that they f- shoot the whole thing from his perspective up in the rafter and it looks great. Mm-hmm. As they're kind of dragging Amy down, she's able to look up. What does she see? Oh, a piercing blue eye just staring down at her. I get the effect, but I don't. I think she would have been more freaked out that there was a dude looking she, at her. She doesn't know that she knows those eyes. She recognizes those those baby blues. Oh my no, no. I don't know. I think those eyes are pretty specific. You guys are telling me that if I'm looking at you while you're in the shower, you'd know that that was my eye. Yeah. How? Because I would have saw your dick first. Yeah. <laughs> Smashed up against the glass. Yeah, no, my dick can't fit. I would have a small hole. I would have heard you and squealing bigger. out there. No, you would have heard me drilling a bigger hole so I could fit my penis in there. If you say so, buddy. My cucumber. It's not like you got four of them taped together. I don't. That's just inconvenient. I love sticking my dick through a sharp oh. glass hole. <laughs> oh. Why? I don't. I look don't. This, I'm being ironic. This, I wouldn't do that. Look at this. Is it ever? Is it ever a woman with a glass shower, dude? <laughs> is it ever a woman on the other side of the hole? When? In my scenarios, no, it's never happened to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what it is about me that women don't want to come in and uh, <laughs> and and peep on me. But I think Dan was talking like a glory hole situation. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, but if you're at the point to where you're sticking your penis through a hole at some random establishment, do you really no. care? It's it's sad that it comes to that level of desperation that people resort to that. But I wonder if like with, you know, chat roulette. Or, you know, these sort of things. I wonder if that stuff has gone down, you know, or. What is, what is chat nobody roulette? Nobody fucking knows who, what chat roulette is. I don't know what chat roulette is. Uh, is this a app or something? It's been shit? in the fucking zeitgeist for 20 years. It's a, it's like a random Zoom. It's like a random, like, video chat with people. And you, it just randomly connects people. And people go on there and they do all sorts of shit. So, you're telling me that we could have a guest every week. (laughs) I'm telling you that there are content creators that do stuff through chat roulette. Um, Just finish already, buddy. (laughs) Hey, you guys didn't tell me I was going to be on here for two hours. Well, it's a Thunder in Paradise (laughs) episode, sir. Sorry. (laughs) What the fuck is that? (laughs) I think the, the freestyle rapper, I think his name is Harry Mack. Like, he goes on there. And they, like, find people and he asks for suggestions and he'll, you know, do, like, a three-minute rap while people watch. So it's not just sexual It's things. not intended that way, but, of course, uh, pervs ruin stuff 30 <laughs> seconds it after it's for. initiated. So, yeah. <laughs> huh. That's one thing to tack up of don't join, like, just, like, OnlyFans. Got it. Or foot finder. Don't join them? Yeah. That's a no-no over here. Uh, you you got a list of banned websites <laughs> on the refrigerator? Yeah. For me. Just on my phone. Like, yeah, don't go down that hole. Well, it's good that you know yourself and you know your limitations. Recently learned what Whisper was. The Whisper app. That I don't know. Let's go. Apparently, it's like a Snapchat kind of thing. I used for 
to hook oh, up, okay. I guess. Whisper me your butthole. <laughs> is I want to see is it. Is that mean, like a quiet fart? Well, it's just like a picture of somebody's butthole, I think. But it's delivered like, through like the whisper app. over an empty Coke bottle. <laughs> That was good. Breakdown. Uh, let's see. Oh, so they're dragging Amy That's down it. into this really into this cellar. Warren mentions, "Hey, in about ten minutes, all the air down there is going to be gone, so you're not even going to feel it." If Amy's the crying down leaving. there, do you call it the wine cellar? Oh, Amy's crying. Oh, Amy's crying. Now, add it to the playlist, dude. That's your job. Do they not give a shit if these ladies die? Are they not selling them into, like, being a sex well, slave? Well, they say that they're... Or did I just go I think darker you went than darker what I was supposed too. to? Because I... Okay. I was even, and this might be triggerish. Um, I was unsure of, about any more money. sort of sexual assault too. I think in my mind, like what I remembered as a kid, like there was some, and they they use some language later on that, or you know earlier that's a little suggestive. But on this watch, I didn't get that sense. I I really think based on Warren saying like the fact that Kurt Russell didn't come with Amy like fucked up the plan. To me, it's kind of like they just kidnap a couple. They're like, okay, how much money do you have in your bank? $10,000. Okay, give us all that. Now you're dead. We're just going yeah. like, to shoot you. or Because they, they very yeah. nonchalantly say that they're just going to bury her. So. Yeah. I think, the, I think the scheme is usually just like figure out how much money they have, get that money, and then it's over. Yeah. You know? That's the way I took it. But or if they have cameras Warren, to add to your collection, that's the way you would do it. No, I think that's like what is implied in the movie. <laughs> but I think Warren also does say something at some point. Like he says something about Amy's got nice hair above and below. So I think he does kind of imply like some kind of uh, sexual and I. I think he said he, she has like 20 pound boobs or some yeah something. Well, and then as you're as I'm thinking about her action at the end, maybe so. Maybe they just went about it I I hate to say, like more subtly, you know. I think if there subtly, was like the subtle. sex selling them to the sex rings I think it would be more pervy on their yeah. end yeah there's there's something about like just the old school road pirate you know about it that and it's charming you know it's like <laughs> it looks fun I mean <laughs> I would consider this lifestyle Kind of made me wish I was out there chopping mm -hmm. it up with Warren and the boys. <laughs> Artisanal hijackery, you know? Mm -hmm. These guys. Oh, you're one of the. Oh, oh no, you're not. Oh, well, I'll buy you a beer. These guys leave the bar or the bar. These guys leave the barn to go get uh, some breakfast. Jeff's able to run down. He gets to the trap door, but he can't get it open. It's been padlocked. Oh, frustrated me. Oh. But he is able to find a pistol in the truck. So he's got a gun back. Jeff sneaks into Warren's house. Warren, his goons, and Warren's wife are all eating breakfast. Every, basically everyone except for Deke, who's busy playing Doom. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. God. That Fucking brought back God some memories. Knows. Jeff enters the dining room. He says, give me the key. 
Warren's Give like, me the fucking keys, you fucking cocksucker. Warren says, hey, mister. Jeff's like, don't mister me. <laughs> My wife is locked up in a hole in your fucking barn. If you don't give me the key, I'm going to blow your fucking head off. It's pretty yeah. sweet. Just then, Deke walks in with a rifle. Jeff tells him, you know, you don't want to do that. Warren tells Deke, go ahead, squeeze the trigger. Jeff's able to, like, push the rifle out of the way just as Deke fires, which catches one of these goons in the shoulder. Uh, goon number two, who's Billy Bob, he takes off running. Uh, but now Jeff has all the guns. He leads everybody to the barn. Warren's wife opens the door. They find a freezer down there. They open it. Amy is inside. She crawls up out of the hole. He's a better guy than me Jeff tells because him. I would have shot. I would have finished the other dude off. Mm-hmm. Quite honestly. And I would have, I think I would have shot Warren in the arm or the leg. Like, you still need him to be alive to get the key, but I wouldn't, I, and quite honestly, odds are I would have probably shot him in the head and looked for a key or at least kill them and then I can shoot the lock off or something. Like, he's, he handles this a little bit cooler than. There's there's bound to be an axe somewhere around that house. I guess he only got. You know, maybe, like, it's a 10-minute max window, right, before the air runs out. So, I guess you got to get the key first. But, yeah, I mean, once Amy's out of there, just shoot them all in the face yeah. and leave. But I know? thought that, too, like, once he had the gun, I was debating how long would it take to shoot the lock off, get her, and run out. But I guess you don't know, is she, like, is she locked she up or what, you. you know, like, you're not going to necessarily shoot the lock off and then take off 30 seconds later. Mm -hmm. So. If you're Warren's wife, is this divorce territory like right now? She seems pretty surprised by it. So. Yeah. But then immediately back on his side, you know, it's. I'd shoot her in the lake too. She's the one you, like, after you kill the other two, you shoot her in the mm-hmm. leg and. <laughs> Change your fucking life. Yeah. But then you still sell all those cameras and move. <laughs> Jeff tells everyone to get down into the hole. Warren turns around and starts to say something to him. But Jeff just screams, you fuck, and kicks him yeah. right in the face. Uh, closes the door and padlocks it back. Jeff tells Amy, hey, there's still one guy out there, so we got to move fast. They find a couple cars, but no keys. Outside the property, they can see a mobile home and a truck that's kind of, I don't know, 100, 100 yards away. They run for it. They get to the truck. It's got no keys. Um... But they are able to get into the trailer. We see the last goon. He's got a shotgun from Warren's house. He runs out to the barn. Amy's found the keys for the truck outside the trailer. But when do you know it? Uh, Warren's gotten out. He plows a semi like right through the trailer. Right through the mobile home. Nice. Amy and Jeff are able to get up. They get into the little service truck that's outside the mobile home. They get it started right as Warren's coming in for another hit with the semi. Jeff and Amy are driving away. They can't see Warren, but both of his goons uh, have pulled up in a couple cars. So they're kind of racing down the freeway, you know, three wide. They're on either... They're three wide! They're three wide! Oh my god! (laughs) I'm coming down the road and I'm flirting with disaster. It's, it's all this Jeff movie was missing with some fucking Molly Hatchet. <laughs> Little free bird or mm-hmm. something at the end of this. That's that's Skinner, dude. Yeah, but I'm just yeah, it could I, work. I what you're saying. Can you name another uh, Molly Hatchet song? Because I can't. Ooh. 
Do I have a Molly Hatchet record? I don't think I do. I might. I don't know. I had to check. Time to get on eBay right after this recording. Was it your huh? high school girlfriend? Didn't we call her? What was her Molly Hatchet wound? <laughs> Mine. You were yeah, so her dis- name was You Molly were so Hatchet disrespectful wound. to her. Just did I? Did yeah, I just because she Molly? came from money. If she came from money, I would have hung on. No, it was Molly Roast Beef Curtains. That's got a good ring to it. She has the beef. <laughs> We're still getting can Luckily, nobody's no. this far in. <laughs> Except for Brantley. Hi, Brantley. Jeff, Love sl- you. Jeff slams on the brakes, uh, but... Warren is back in his semi. He slams right into the back of their little service truck. Jeff's able to flip uh, one of these goons' cars. Warren ends up jackknifing his truck, and goon two slams into the trailer. So now we're just down to Jeff in this work truck and Warren in a in the semi cab. These two drive onto a bridge. Jeff's truck gets turned. Uh, Warren is trying to ram the couple off the side of the bridge, and it's like way up there. I mean, it's like a huge drop down. Jeff's able to crawl out, but Amy's pinned inside. Jeff jumps on the hood of the semi. Uh, He's able to get into the cab. He grabs the wheel, and he starts like forcing Warren's car up and over the service truck. The semi-cab goes over. It's kind of stuck up against the service truck and the guardrail, so it's like hanging basically, you know, vertically off the bridge. These two both kind of spill out. Jeff is on the hood. Warren is like climbing up through the cab. Jeff catches up to Warren. Warren gets a chain off the side of the truck wraps it around his arm and just starts swinging down, beating Jeff. God, it looks so good. Like them actually being whatever force perspective or whatever that they're pulling off. Like actually seeing them in the space hanging off this thing looks so good. Jeff's able to reach up and grab the chain, which Warren is hitting him with. Uh, He grabs it. Warren kind of looks over and sees that it's wrapped around his wrist. Jeff pulls it as hard as he can, which sends Warren, like, flying over the whole cab. He smashes down onto the ground below. Jeff gets back to Amy, uh, but the trucks are still tangled up, so the weight of the semi is threatening to pull that service truck, like, right off the bridge with it. Jeff is able to wrestle Amy's leg free. The two collapse on the ground. They look down. Below, they can see Warren. He's not looking good, but he does kind of make like a small movement with his hand. Amy puts the service truck into gear. The (laughs) semi just crashes to the ground below right on top of Warren. Camera kind of slow zooms out. Amy and Jeff are holding each other. Roll credits. This one ends as soon as it begins. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was Breakdown from 1997, directed by Jonathan Mostow. Thanks for breaking that down, Cron. Oh, what a perfect joke. That's it? <laughs> Gentlemen, upon further research, Kurt Russell was only allowed per his contract, to shoot for 12 hours. In total? Total, per day. Okay. And that included travel time. That's not not total, but okay. (laughs) Oh, not 12 hours. I feel like 12 hours a day is a decently long shoot. Yeah, nobody should have to. It included travel time, so airport and driving. That's like two days. From his house. Airport? (laughs) Yeah. So he slept in his own bed? They flew him out there every day? Damn, yep. that's crazy. God damn. 
Well, well, Brewster's million. Yeah. Uh, writer and well, director. If you fucking got Goldie Hawn in your bed. Shit. Maybe you want to. I gotta go home every day. <laughs> Gold, we also Goldie have another director. It. That's what I'm that saying. Was, yeah. uh, married to Goldie as yeah. well. Uh, writer and director Jonathan Masto got the idea while driving to Las Vegas with his wife. Um, what if you got kidnapped? You stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to play a Shut the fuck up with the fucking roulette. donuts. God damn it. MC You Ganey. don't have to read every piece of trash we pick up. MC Ganey said that Earl, his character, was the darkest he's ever played in a film, and he regretted it afterwards. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> he did a great job. You, did, you gave the world a gift there, buddy. All right. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, uh, Kurt Russell and uh, JT Walsh were in three movies together after this. Tequila Sunrise, Backdraft. I know <laughs> And do you know the last one, Bones? Executive decision. Yes, you are correct. Oh, the Coke can that the deputy is doing is for the 1996 Olympics. Does anybody remember that Coke can? Is that Atlanta? Yep. Uh, Dennis Quaid, Bruce Willis, Ed Harris, Mel Gibson, and Richard Gere all considered for our leading role here. Um, I think they I went with the right guy. I, 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 yeah, I think they went the right choice. Yeah, I could see Mel in this, but how far is this after uh, Ransom or before? With uh, Ransom Mel. was ninety. Was it ninety eight for Ransom? Ninety six. Oh, really? Yeah. He probably said too close to ransom. <laughs> yeah. And you can't have Harrison Ford because he's constantly looking for his wife or his family. Or... Uh, Jonathan Musto and Kurt Russell met a few years prior to this when the director was trying to land uh, the game. But it went, uh, eventually went to David Fincher and Michael Douglas. So... What about Sean Penn in this? That'd have nah. been fucking unhinged. <laughs> Sean Penn and unhinged? No. No, 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 no. Unhinged yeah. doesn't work without Russell Crowe. Reg truck is a Peterbilt 377. That's the big rig he is driving. Um, and That's about it, gentlemen. Yeah, that's all I want. A Peterbilt? <laughs> yeah. Earl's pickup is a 1987 F-150 Super Cab XLT. That's all I want. But it's a 4x2. It's not a 4x4. I don't care. The Sheriff drives a 1992 Ford Crown Victoria Police Package P-72. What fucking car film uh, database did you go on? Or is this all in IMDb? Al drives a 1972 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. Who the fuck is Al? There's like a car movie database. Yeah. Al. Was Al one of the other goons? The one that got yeah. shot at the dinner table? Probably. Probably some stunt man that they threw a few lines to. Uh, Kurt Russell kills J.T. Walsh twice in a movie. What other one does he kill him in? I don't think he kills him in an executive decision because he J.T. Walsh is a senator. I don't think he he's a fucking alderman or something in backdraft. So what was the other one that they were in? Tequila, tequila Sunrise. Sunrise. I'm going to say Tequila Sunrise. That's right. Body count for the movie. Anybody? Uh, it's got to be decently low. Like, I don't know. I'd say like six. MC. I go five, four. So MC Ganey, the cop, JT Walsh. Are they saying? Oh, what about the other two guys? Two though they they yeah, died. They saying maybe Billy survived or could be a breakdown. Was there a breakdown too? 
Still breaking. Right <laughs> yeah. This time he gets kid. This time it's break dancing. <laughs> Gentlemen, that's it for upon further research. I think it's time for uh, New Mexico's favorite game. Yeah, that's right. We see you out there, New Mexico. Thank you. Rate my box. Gentlemen, at the time of our game, Breakdown sits at a 3.5 on Letterboxd. Kron, this was your movie. Dan, why don't you go first? Gentlemen, I have Bonesosaurus at a four. I have The Chronicle at a four. Dan, 3.5. Cron, 4. Bones, 4. Dan. I'm going 4. Why not? That's you. me? Ah, gentlemen, not much to say here about Breakdown from 1997, directed by Jonathan Mosto. Um, Not a lot of fat here. You get on the ride, you buy the ticket, and you go. Um, Kurt Russell's good. I think our goons are great. Uh, It's a big rig movie. It it fit the category very well. Um, But I think Letterboxd is is correct. I'm at 3.5. Uh, good movie. No complaints. Uh, watched it twice. It flew by. Uh, yeah, man. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Good pick, Cron. Solid flick, man. You don't see stuff like this made at, at this budgetary level anymore. More often than not, this is a quick little fucking Hulu throwaway starring some woman that used to be on a soap and some washed up actor, you know, or sort of still in the peak of Kurt Russell. Um, he's great in it. I don't think he's, he's not chewing scenery, nor is he phoning it in. Um, great supporting cast. It's a tight script. Like Dan said, no fat. And it's just great cause and effect. Uh, continually snowballs. Um, and it's, I think it's tough sometimes when you have a story that's based off like, what would you do in this situation? And um, this gets a lot of those beats correct. And it had us, I had, we had fun talking. I mean, there's 4.0. Cron, right before you go, budget was 36 mil, grossed 50 worldwide, over 50. All right, guys. Uh, breakdown. I do think this is really a great movie. Um, I think it just does a lot of things that I really like. Like, I mean, you guys know I love Kurt Russell as an actor. Um, having him as the lead of this thing, I do think boosted up a little bit. Um, and I said this when we covered Extreme Prejudice, like. I love a movie that is just filled out by great character actors, dudes that look like they belong in the environment you've put them in. Like, I totally believe J.T. Walsh and M.C. Ganey, like, could just completely be, like, backwater hillbillies, like, stuck out here in the desert. Um, And I don't know, man. Like, the movie just moves. It's, I don't know, an hour 30, maybe, like, slightly over. Um but like less than an hour 35. I feel like even the donut thing that would be probably a throwaway line in like a lot of other media, um, like it has a purpose here. Everything that's in this story has a purpose. It propels the movie forward. Um, So I don't know, man. Like I first watched this after we came off of the Puppets Revenge category And I did think this is a really great movie, but I also kind of thought like, am I only thinking that compared to what we just watched? Um, But I've continued to revisit this movie. Like I liked it the first time I saw it. 
I did convince my wife to sit down and watch it. I think she had a pretty good time watching this. Um, I feel like this would apply to a lot of people. Like I could show this movie to my parents and it's, I don't know, it's got like a little bit of bad language or something, but I feel like almost anybody could watch this movie and appreciate it. Um, I don't know, guys. I like this movie a lot. 4.5. That'll make that a 4. That is correct. This movie would have an average rating from the three of us of 4.0. This thing would land at number 11 on the big list, right out of the top 10. This would currently be right below Maniac Cop 2 at number 10, right above Raising Cain at number 12. Solid pick, dude. Fun app. Anything else before Dan takes us out? Yeah, what are our scores for Rate My Oh, 1.5, sorry. For all of us? Yep. Cool. Uh, 1.5s all around. I would have an ending score of 21.5, Bones 23, Dan 20.5. So there we go. Two moves left. It is mine to lose. I think when we come back for after showers, Bones is going to be telling us what we watch next for Revenge 4, Big Rigs Are Back. I guess until then, crash and burn. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. you guys fucking sandy as hell following breakdown Oof. yeah it's a hot one rough the sand's getting all over my oil and i don't <laughs> like it one bit <laughs> gritty by the way uh whoever threw their water bottle up against the wall like pick that shit up right nothing nobody's gonna own up to that all right. No. No. Was it a Fiji water I, bottle? I don't know. Whatever. One of you guys took it out of the fucking fridge and then chugged it and threw it against the wall. <laughs> that uh, was that custom. Yeah, some dipshit came in <laughs> talking about his Jeep for fucking two hours. Didn't know anything about the car that he drove. Yeah, I'm sure you guys gave him the best customer service. <laughs> we did. Cron. Revenge 4, Big Rigs are back. Um, I can't promise that I'm going to remember that this is Revenge 4 at this point. I, I, I can't That's keep okay. track. Um, I'm the only one keeping up with Revenges. Yeah. So. You've cornered the market. Revenge, there's a Revenge 5 already slotted for Season 2. <laughs> um, Big Rigs are back. I love this category. Right up my alley. So many possible action extravaganzas um you know type in big rigs type in semi trucks in the letterbox and you'll get a, a so many lists uh why'd you say semi like that semi, semi trucks <laughs> I, was, I was like lean on that i wasn't telling you to type it in a letterbox yet I'm like whatever okay I can feel you holding your pinky out as you said that. I'm holding something. <laughs> All right. Semi-trucks. I had a uh, 
real tough time with this because this is the last category of season one. It's 30 categories, and I want to go out with a bang, right? But That leaves a stain on the floor? Yeah. But it's my cab, and I can do what I want. That's true. I have picked a movie, which any other podcast probably would say, oh, that's too good. That That's a five-star banger. God damn it. But quite honestly, if I look at our scores, which I didn't look at them and memorize them because I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to delete these. I would like to revisit this thing. He's already looked. And let's see if if maybe we were wrong. If maybe we're on the wrong side of of the love of this thing. And we're going pretty modern. How you doing, Fury Road? We're going to 2015. <laughs> George Miller's Mad Max Fury Road. Can I stream the black and chrome edition anywhere? I don't know. <laughs> it has I, to be the I, black and chrome. I, I want to watch it in black and chrome if that's what we're doing. Ordering it and sending it to you to see if you could rip the black and white chrome. I know. Let me, see, let me see how much it costs. It is. <laughs> I think I'm just going to buy this thing on iTunes for the 4K right now. It's 10 bucks. Um, but give me that black and chrome, baby. <laughs> I I like this move though. Yeah, I I like this. Um, you can get it on Prime Video. Is that? I didn't see it like you know on any streaming services. It looked like you had to rent or buy currently. Well, well, it says it's available to rent, but specifically the black and chrome version. Oh, okay. I didn't know if um, because like iTunes right now is doing. It's pretty awesome when you purchase stuff. They any like available, like extra content is included. Um, so we might look into that, and and we'll discuss. Maybe if one of us, if if Kron seeks out Black and Chrome, you know, maybe I'll on my notes watch. That's what I'll I'll do. I am nervous about a plot breakdown on this because it might just be a lot of well. Anyway, there's another long driving scene. Um. But again, uh, this is you, – you talk to most most people, they fucking love this movie. Um, and I think for some reason, yeah. the three of us were just like, it's all right. Um, I didn't think it was a game changer like it's sort of referenced as now, but maybe with a different set of eyes and maybe compared to the other hundred movies that we've watched, um, it'll go up, could go down. I don't know, but uh, – Mad Max Fury Road next week on five day rentals. My co hosts are searching the internet. Just taking my score down. I'm really only seeing like 20 bucks is the purchase price of the Blu ray. Are you going to get it? I don't know if I want to send you 10 bucks. I don't know if I want to own it that bad. (laughs) I'll, I feel like we sh- should watch the black you, and chrome version. Do you think the black and chrome version is going to change anything? They push pretty hard to get it out there, so I don't know. Is it a shitty cash grab or true artistic merit? There's only one way to yeah. find out. Now, I, I just saw the thing the once. I went to the theater. I saw it. I was like, that's pretty fun. And then a week later, it was, this is a game changer. So, yeah. Oscars. Best picture. Was it, is it just the one time for you guys? Uh, I've caught, like, bits on yeah. TV, but never sat down and fully rewatched it. Yeah, I'd say about the same. I know I saw this once and then have maybe... Watched like the beginning over again or something. Yeah. All right, this is good though because 
I thought maybe for the first time Bones might have took my pick, but no. Okay. Uh, I told you before record, I was down to really three choices. And as we were sitting here going, I was like, I really, I want this, I want this category to, I want big rigs to live on the lists in a, in a high caliber. So it was, I'm not excited to do plot on this. Um, and it's not my intent to just pick a movie that's going to get three and a half or higher, you know, but. What were your other choices? Uh, what were the years? Or you can say them. I don't have to expose anything. Um, I mean, I'm not wearing pants, but you know. 96. And I think the other one was 75. Oh, yeah, okay. we're good. Yeah. I almost pulled a cron move and picked T2. What? You can't. Yeah, that that would be a five star for you. Yeah, it's called pulling a five star for me. Uh, the audience no, voted we're not doing in that. big trouble. I didn't pick. Well, that. apparently, you just put it out there, and enough people get behind you. But I guess that's just you that that people do that for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just naturally antagonistic okay. just, for some reason. People like I am, me. That's the only movie they know. I am a baby bump. People feel free to just come up and fucking interact with me without getting to know me. Yeah, the, Dan has a good point. The fucking dum-dums that listen to this show, they only know <laughs> like three movies and one of them seems to be Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, I put two movies Comments up. Comments made by Cron Howard do not represent the know. totality of five day rentals. <laughs> All right. Speaking of uh, people that listen to our show and where they can interact, Dan, do your little bit. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, rate, review the show. We're on all podcasts, platforms, I guess that's what they're called. Ah, uh, shit. Do we have anything we need to promote anywhere? No. No? Nobody's been on any shows? Um, Dan has. Yeah, you'll be, you've got something coming out soon. It'll, it'll be coming out soon. Uh, look, look forward to uh, horror drafts, horror remakes. Uh, it should be coming up soon. Uh, whenever I guessed it on uh, the horror draft shows, our, our show, our, our good buddies over there. We love those guys. We're going to get them back on for a category. Um, we will be taking a break in July. So if you don't see us in your feed, don't freak out. We have 120 other episodes you can check out. So get caught up. Yeah, we got, we got big things coming for season two. So yeah, we got, we got some guests that we're going to try to get on. We got some, uh, we got some new stuff coming. It's going to be fun. Have you guys started working working on your categories nope. yet? Or? I got one written down. <laughs> All right. You guys got any guess ideas that you're thinking? No. I don't like subjecting people to this. Cron? No, I got nothing. No. I only wrote down one category, so how do I know? All right. You know, I'm just asking. I'm just giving the audience a little, you know peek behind the curtain dude shit but uh yeah find us on uh instagram twitter and uh if you really want to interact join the discord like we said that's where we're at so uh yeah that's it go fuck an iceberg crash and burn black and chrome <laughs>